Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the NECA Aliens Gorilla Alien. So this is just in line with the Mantis figure. Take an alien, take a xenomorph, and mix it with something to make another figure to make. That's what happened back in the 90s, and now NECA is recreating them with all of their style and fanciness. And I have to say, it works very nicely. I mean, you guys know NECA's been killing it with the Predators and Aliens for a long time now, and this one is really no exception. Uh, it's actually right up my alley because gorillas are cool. Alright, there's nothing wrong with gorillas. Aliens are cool, and this is a black and blue figure, and I like black and blue. So I, I like this one. You can't go wrong with it. So uh, let's go ahead and just get it off the stand and take a closer look. So this guy doesn't have the lankiness of the Mantis, and of course you could stand him upright and get him a lot taller, but I'm going to go ahead and measure him with his body hunched and his knuckles on the ground because that's how Gorilla would stand and that's how you would have this guy standing most likely. And of course, like I said, you could stand him up and make him a lot taller. But you're looking at right around to the top of the head, the way it flips up, right around, eh, let's say eight and a half, let's call it eight and a half which makes him just around, yeah, let's say 21 centimeters, right around there anyway. And uh, like I said, he could be a whole lot bigger if you wanted him to be. So it's a whole lot of figure for your money. That's one of the things NECA never disappoints with. And uh, the paint job is just really cool. Yes, it's kind of basic. It's just a lot of blue dry brushed over black. That's fine. But it looks really, really nice. And there's actually two blues. We have a lighter blue, which you can see through like the little tubers and things. And then it's also on some of the panels on the skin or on the body. I guess it's, I don't know, what, is it skin? I don't even know. I guess it's skin for a xenomorph, right? I don't know. I don't know how that works. You can see the light blue throughout. There's also silver throughout in other tubers and places. So it's very cool. I mean, it's not the most dynamically colored thing, but it has enough, and it's well enough executed that it looks really nice. Before we talk about the figure anymore, though, let's talk accessories. We do have a face hugger, which has a wired tail, so that's pretty cool. We have interchangeable domes. We have the black one that comes on the figure in the package, which is my personal favorite. We also have a translucent one with a little bit of shading. Now, they do kind of snap into place, but they are also kind of a pain in the ass to keep on. They don't necessarily want to stay in place. And the, the clear one, since it wasn't on the figure, it's kind of warped. So you may have to hit that with a hairdryer to get it to fit down in place. But it does look really cool, so if you do want the translucent one, it comes with it. That's kind of a nice touch. And we get a small Dark Horse comic if you're into that sort of thing. So as far as the rest of the figure goes, I do I do really like it. It has a lot of the same parts we've seen before, but it does have some new parts. Obviously the head is massive and really cool looking, and it's on a double ball peg, so it can look down pretty far, and it doesn't go quite as far up because of how massive it is, but I think that's pretty good range. It's, eh, it's almost 90 degrees worth of range, so that's cool, and of course it can lean side to side a little bit, not a ton, but that's just limited due to the bulkiness, so that's the way it goes. Now the teeth, this really nice silver and uh, translucent plastic looks great for the mouth. It does hinge open and you do get the uh, internal little mouth. You have to pull that out there. His is not floppy like the Mantis, so that's pretty cool. I like that. That's going to make for a really cool display with the uh, extra showing gorilla teeth. I like the way they did that. I'm pretty sure that's unique for this guy. So that's pretty nice. For the shoulders, we have our standard ball hinge style shoulders, so they're going to move around no problem. Really only limited by the way the sculpt hangs over a little bit here, so not really a big deal at all. You have your traditional bicep swivel, which is nice. Double jointed elbow, it'll swivel at both ends and have both joints. So full 180 basically and rotation, so that's cool. We have the extended gorilla forearms, which are nice and beefy and muscular looking and extra long. And then we have the swivel and the hinge for the wrist, which will allow him to be in normal poses or in that kind of gorilla pose. So I like that. It is a little bit loose. That's kind of disappointing, but that's probably just the fluke of this figure. I wouldn't count on them all being loose like that. We have a double ball peg, maybe a single, but at least a, at least a single, maybe a double for the torso. It mostly just rotates. It's a little bit too bulky to get much out of otherwise, so that's kind of a bummer, but it's probably not that big of a deal. That's up to you, though. For the hips, same as the Mantis, this is soft plastic and we have our standard ball hinges in there. So you can bring them up all the way, you're just going to have to mush the crotch piece a little bit. And then they go all the way out to the side as well, and you have your thigh swivel built in there, so you really shouldn't have too much trouble with the hips. For the knees, standard double jointed knee, really not anything special going on there, but it works nicely. Full 180 degree bend, and then we have an ankle ball peg which allows the foot to move around. It has pretty good range, surprisingly good range, 
forward and back and side to side so you get a little bit of an ankle rocker and you have a toe hinge which will allow him to get in more of a crouched pose like a gorilla. Lastly we have the bendable tail which is a little bit skinnier than your average xenomorph tail so it holds a bend pretty nicely. Not too bad at all. So if you're into this sort of thing, I have to say it's a pretty cool figure. If you're not into the Xenomorphs in particular, then this probably isn't one you want to pick up because it is a very particular style, being that it's the gorilla rather than a traditional Xenomorph. But it is cool figure for what it is. So objectively, I do like it. Uh, subjectively, it's not really my cup of tea. I mean, I like the colors and everything, but I'm not really into the Xenomorphs enough to buy something like this for my own collection, but uh, I think you guys might like it. So there it is. It's pretty cool for what it is. So there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't done it already, and you also want to click that little bell next to the subscribe button so that you can turn on notifications, because that will let you know when I have a new video up, which is every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for that, and in the meantime, keep collecting.